Hi, I'm Maxine. And I'm Siu Chin. Today, we'll be bringing you around two of our nature parks and tell you more about the role that they play in our city in nature. Nature parks help safeguard core biodiversity habitats by buffering our nature reserves from the impacts of urban developments. They also provide complementary habitats for the reserve's flora and fauna, helping to support a bigger population and thereby ensuring these species are more resilient to climate change. Not only that, nature parks are also an alternative nature-based recreational space for people, allowing communities to appreciate biodiversity in various ways, such as nature photography and bird watching. This helps to reduce visitorship pressure on our core biodiversity sites, such as nature reserves. Maxine, as I'm sure you will know, many of our nature parks here used to be old kampongs and plantation. So it is not surprising that we can find plant species here reminiscent of our past, such as the bananas as well as the rubber trees. The forests in this area were once cleared to make way for plantations and cultivation. So the vegetation here would actually be considered secondary forests we wouldn't see native climate species such as diptera carps here at all. There are many nature parks in Singapore, including Dairy Farm Nature Park, where we are now. Dairy Farm Nature Park was opened by the National Parks Board in 2009. It features the Wallace Education Centre, Nature Trails and the scenic Singapore Quarry. This nature park stands at the foot of Bukit Timah Hill. In the 1800s, the foothills were cleared for Gambia and pepper plantations and settlements. In the 1930s, Fred Heron, then Managing Director of Cold Storage, established the world's first tropical dairy farm on a 24-hectare patch of jungle. At that time, only a number of small dairies here provided fresh milk and the quality was considered inferior. That was why they built the new farms to meet the demand for high-quality, pasteurised milk from expatriates families in Singapore. So now you know how Dairy Farm Road and subsequently Dairy Farm Nature Park got their names. In 2002, the Dairy Farm Quarry area was identified as a nature park under the Urban Redevelopment Authority's Parks and Water Bodies Plan. Fast forward to today, Dairy Farm Nature Park is a beautiful park visited by many seeking an alternative entry into the Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. I'm not sure about you, but I enjoy spotting randoms of past settlements, such as walls of houses and wells along the trails. So over here, you can spot plants like heliconia, arrowheads like this, as well as fruit trees, because these areas used to be kampongs, as well as nursery. These have been left behind to grow as the forests recover over time. Another fruit tree that we should look out for is the durian tree. It's commonly found in many of our nature parks. You can easily distinguish them from other trees by looking out for its coppery or golden underside of its leaves. The tree that we're standing under now is actually called the durio zibethinus. It's commonly the durian that we eat. Maxine wants to know a fun fact. We actually have a durian that is called durio singaporensis and it is native to Singapore and Peninsular Malaysia. The Singapore Durian, otherwise known as Duro Singaporensis. It is a large forest tree that grows up to 40 meters tall and relies on bats to pollinate its flowers. Since we are talking about native species, let's hop over to another nature park and look for more. With an area of 81 hectares, Chestnut Nature Park is the largest nature park in Singapore and it's really popular with mountain bikers with more than 8 kilometers of cycling trails here. Like many of our buffer parks, Chestnut Nature Park has had a relatively long history of disturbance. It was previously cultivated lands or kampongs, now left for regeneration. These buffer parks are at various stages of succession, mostly at the young secondary forest stage. Many of this vegetation are dominated by non-native tree species, such as the African tulip and the Albizia trees. This is where we come in to assist with the natural regeneration of our secondary forests into more biodiverse rainforests. 
This also helps to strengthen the resilience of our forests and to re-establish ecological processes. Ten Parks implemented the Forest Restoration Action Plan in 2019 with the aim of planting over 250,000 native trees and shrubs within our nature reserves and nature parks in the next 10 years. The plan focuses on assisting the regeneration of the secondary forests in our nature parks and in disturbed patches within our nature reserves. Under the plan, invasive species are also removed while native species are propagated and reintroduced into our natural spaces. To restore the forest habitat, Chestnut Nature Park has been planted out with native tree species such as the Jalutong. The Jalutong is a large tree that grows up to 80 metres tall and can be found in both primary and secondary rainforests. The young leaves are reddish that grow upright, while the mature leaves are green that droop downwards. A lot of work goes into protecting our forests, and it's even more meaningful when our community joins us in protecting these beautiful spaces. This is where the Friends of the Park initiative comes in. The stakeholders of this initiative help us to promote community ownership as well as responsible park use. I'm part of Friends of Chestnut Nature Parks, and together with my students from Richview Residential College, we are part of the Forest Restoration Action Plans. We help to restore the forest for our native biodiversity and engage others in our efforts. This does not simply mean planting trees, but we also monitor them over time. We want these degraded sites to recover to complex ecosystem that can sustain the biodiversity that we have here. So these would ultimately be habitats for our native plants and animals and ultimately provide important ecosystem services for us. There are a lot of considerations to think about when choosing a reforestation site, such as the amount of sunlight that a site receives. An open area that has a lot of sun exposure is more suited to pioneer species and early secondary species trees. Fast-growing species are also preferred because their canopy casts shade and slows the growth of sun-loving weeds. Trees that fruit early are also preferred as they provide food for wildlife and at the same time, the wildlife could bring in seeds from elsewhere into the site. This will ensure that the forest continues to grow new trees. RVRC has helped plant over 500 trees in Chestnut Nature Park since 2018. They include the Jalutong, Pertai, Sepertia and the Maranti Tambanga. We have also started a nursery in our residential college to collect and grow native tree species which we plan to plant back into the restoration sites. By planting native species, we are protecting our natural heritage, especially rarer species that are not easily dispersed. With greater species diversity, our forests can become more resilient. You can also check out the other nature parks in Singapore using our Nature Park Network. There's plenty to discover in these green spaces, which house our native biodiversity. When visiting our green spaces, remember to take nothing but photographs and leave nothing but footprints. Stay on the designated trails. Look out for our map boards and informative signs to learn more about our green spaces. We hope you have enjoyed this tour of two of our nature parks in our city in nature. Thank you and we hope to see you again soon.